When it comes to outdoor entertaining, we often overlook our patios, but to add some much needed sparkle, we're creating an overhead candle holder. The basic structure of our candle holder is essentially going to be a ladder. Now, I've used a couple of pieces of timber here, which will form a basic ladder structure, and then we'll add some bracketry and style it up. So what you'll need for this project is some paint, a painter's tray, bracketry, glue and screws, some twine, metal cable, and a couple of pieces of timber. Our first step is to prepare the rungs of the ladder. So I'm gonna be using this piece of timber and cutting them into five even uh, pieces. And I'm gonna be using my compound miter saw. But before I do that, I need to measure up the exact size. I'm using a compound miter saw to ensure accurate cuts, but if you don't have a compound miter saw, you can also use a jigsaw and just sand it down to ensure accuracy. With our rungs now cut, we can focus our attention to the outer framework. Now before you cut your outer framework, take into consideration the size of the area that you're going to be using. For my area, I'm going to use 1.4 meters or 140 centimeters and I'm just going to mark out on each piece and draw the line across both of them ensuring that they are parallel to each other and then cut them up after we're done with the cutting we can start securing with our cuts now complete I've laid out our framework as we're going to start assembly to begin we'll take a 10 centimeter measurement from the bottom and make a little marking. This is where we'll place our first rung. We'll do the same on the other side just to ensure that it's parallel. Then from the next rung, we'll measure up again 30 centimeters. So we'll mark off here at 40. Continue to measure out in 30 centimeter increments and continue to place your rungs before we secure with glue and screws. Everything's now secure, we can uh, give a light sand and then we can move on to painting. Moving on to the paint now, I've got two colors. I've got a charcoal and then a white color. The reason I'm using both is because I'm gonna apply the charcoal color first, let that dry, and then come back over with the white color just to give it a two-tone effect because I'm going to distress it with a bit of sandpaper. The reason I'm using this paint, it's a water-based acrylic PVA, so it dries very quickly. And I'm gonna use a simple paint brush and roller set to apply quickly. Start by applying a coat of the dark gray paint. This will form the base of your distressed paint effect. A sponge roller makes easy work of painting the timber slats, while a brush helps to get into the corners. Once the dark gray paint is dry, apply a coat of the white paint. Two coats will ensure a crisp white finish. With the white paint dry, we can now start sanding. We're going to sand it in order to distress it and allow the gray color to be revealed, which is quite a cool look. Here is a prime opportunity to make use of some worn sanding discs. The key to creating an effective distressed paint technique is to sand areas that would naturally be exposed to bumps and scratches. For a more intense result, you can make use of an electric sander. Our frame is painted and sanded, it looks gorgeous, but it's lacking a bit of texture. And to add that, I'm gonna be using some of this rope. So, I'm gonna take a couple of pieces like this. This is about 90 centimeters in length. And then I'm going to wrap it around each joint over here. I've used a cutting pliers just to make it easy to snip because the scissors might take a bit longer. And then what you want to do is wrap around each edge like this. Two should be good enough. And then for the edges, either tuck it in or use a staple gun. To secure our project in place, I'll be using these eyelet hooks. What I'll be doing is creating a pilot hole, and as you can see, I've marked out the depth of each of our hooks, drilling down into the wood, and then securing them into place. 
Thereafter, I'll use this metal cable, cut it to length on each side to create a loop and then secure it in the middle. To attach the eye hook, simply drill a small hole to start it off. Once the hook is bitten into the wood, screw it in until it is properly secured. Cut two pieces of cable to a length where their loops meet in the middle of your hanging ladder. Secure the ends of the cable using cable grips and do exactly the same for the other side. When both sides are done, connect the two pieces of cable in the middle with a cable bracket. To hang the project from a beam or a ceiling, you'll need to cut another piece of cable and secure the loose ends using a cable grip or a crimper. Our cable is now in place. All we need to do is crimp this end to keep it secure, but I'll do that later on once I measure the actual length to the height that I want it. To hang the project from a concrete ceiling, it is a good idea to use an expansion bolt. These come in different shapes and sizes, but in essence, it's a fastener that expands inside the drilled hole. Attach the eye hook, thread the cable through, and secure the cable using a clamp or a crimper. To give some personality to the hanging candle holder and to really make the most of the structure, hang a variety of decorative items from it. This adds to the versatility of the project and allows you to change it for different occasions. Wow guys, this looks absolutely amazing. Now that it's secured in its final position, ensure that you securely mount yours as well. And go wild, go crazy. We've added some eucalyptus branches, we've added some mason jars with key light candles, just to add that much needed ambience.